Uh, let's start with introductions. So we have three people on the panel today, although we've got a whole bunch of frogs watching today, I believe, as well. Uh, we, we, we wanted to make sure that there was at least a few people here to answer questions. So if anybody wants to answer questions in the background, uh, feel free. Uh, so we have Troy, who's our organizational growth, organi that, that, I can't talk today, organizational growth specialist. <laughs> Uh, who's helped many hundreds of companies drive their businesses from single digits to many digits, and Taylor, who's responsible for all the marketing at TreeFrog. Uh, so we've got, she'll also be able to answer a lot of the questions here because she's been through all of our marketing stuff over and over again. And shout out to Troy, because he wrote an awesome article to go along with this webinar, uh, which you are welcome to read. Uh, it's not the same content as this webinar. It's an addendum. It's beneficial. So if you're interested in more information, go read that afterwards. On with the program. So I stole this slide from the Squarespace Space website last night. I love this. This is, you know, as you go to pick your platform and figure out what website technology am I going to use to build, the, the problem is there's no right answer. The answer is always it depends. It depends on what exactly you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to sell products? Are you trying to sell services? Are you trying to promote an event? Are you trying to showcase what you do? Are you trying to build a community? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, though, most businesses fall into one of two categories. That is either A, business to consumer, which is physically selling a product. I have a product and I want to sell that product as many times as possible. And so we either, the idea is, we're going to collect your credit card information, get your address, and send you something, e-commerce. The second thing is, is actually what do we call B2B, which is really, you know, you're selling a service and you want somebody to pick up a phone, you want to download an app, you want to do something else like that. Uh, and that's a different, you, you want different technologies, different goals. Uh, and really what we're trying to do is prove that you're the right answer and then get people to pick up the phone. Or lastly, we're not going to talk about this today, we've got other webinars around this, which is, I have a strong or really big uh, organization already, uh, and the problem is they lack efficiency. So uh, you know, there's a lot of paper getting lost, et cetera. And that's where we start connecting backend systems and making other things work uh, to simplify that process. Today, we're gonna to be talking about business to consumer and business to business platforms, because they're all kind of the same. And at the end of this, you will understand why both we put those into those categories and what you can do moving on. This is also important. Uh, there is a modeling in the back of your head that you should always be thinking about. And there's the, you can sort of pick a model or you can be one or the other. They, kind of, they fit together well. The first is the concept of hub and spoke. The idea is if I only sell my product on my e-commerce website, then all of my other marketing activities are designed to shunt people back towards that site. Hub spokes. So if I'm on social media, the whole goal is to do things on social media to drive people back to the website. If I'm doing our uh, dropping flyers out of a plane, I'm dropping stuff out to go back to the central area. I saying we're gonna be talking about Joomla in a second. We will get back to you. I, did, I just assumed nobody was using it. Eh, sorry, I'll come back to that. So then we've got uh, the alternative to hub and spoke is omni-channel hypothesis. The omni-channel omni hypothesis is, look, you don't need everybody to go back to your website to buy. You could sell in any way. You could sell through uh, through Instagram. You could sell through Etsy. You could sell on eBay. You could sell through Amazon. The goal is to sell products. The goal isn't necessarily to get people to go to your website to buy your product. And that can be a very different relationship. But today we're gonna to focus on that hub and spoke methodology, which is getting everybody back to the center. The second thing which is critical is, look, you can build the greatest website in the world, but if your brand sucks, it's not gonna work. If, you're, if the people you are selling to are not interested in your product, you're not gonna sell it, unfortunately. So we go through this process of trying to figure out what the personas are based on your business idea. You tell us who you wanna sell to and then we'll go build websites and do activities to drive that result. Uh, if that doesn't work, you need to shift who you're selling to, figure out who, what alternative you're gonna sell to and try that instead. And it's not the technology's fault. It's not your digital marketing's fault. It, it ends up being, it's not the tactics. It ends up being strategy. So then you go, go, go right back up to the very, very beginning, figure out what your brand is, figure out who you're selling to, figure out why they'll buy, figure out the personas and the groups, figure out what moods, what they're looking for, and then go try and sell things in that way. So picking the right technology is actually comes after that. 
And so that, I, before we even pick the technology of the platform, I got to say there's some stuff you got to understand about website development before you get in. The first is this idea. So you got all these, all these people who want to buy stuff from you, or you hope that they want to buy stuff from you. There is no one thing that I pull. There is no one tactic that I can use that gets everybody to come in and buy one day. That just doesn't happen. In fact, marketing is about all sorts of different technologies, all sorts of different things, all sorts of different levers that you're pulling all at the same time or at different times to get people to go to, you know, take action and move forward. So really the question becomes, what's the highest and best value actionable activity that I can do to get my audience to the desired result? The desired result is, could be purchasing, could be picking up a phone, could be one of those activities. So the first thing we do is go, okay, well, if we think about this hard, we could group these people are like this, these people are like this, these people are like that, call it persona development. It's a classic industry thing. Once you figured out what those personas are, then we got to figure out, okay, what do they need answered? Uh, what's helpful to them? What's, what's interesting? What drives them? What makes that person that person? And in fact, TreeFrog's process out of this is to create a sheet that you can put up on your, on your wall and say, this is the person every day that I'm trying to speak to. When I write a social media post, I'm speaking to this person. When I drop flyers out of a plane, I'm speaking to this person. When I'm walking down the street, I'm trying to meet these people uh, and focus that all of your efforts on that thing. And in fact, you can even take it further, which is figure out that persona and figure out what is the journey that they're gonna go through all the way through their whole journey with us in order to get to that result that I'm trying to get them to sell or buy, whatever. Uh, one of the things I didn't put in this is the goal isn't just doesn't end at the, at the purchase. The whole relationship matters. So I go through the process of selling somebody all the marketing activity to sell them. Bam, they buy something. Now I have to manage all the, act, act, the after stuff as well. Ideally, they come back and buy more stuff. There are some businesses that only ever sell things to somebody once, like, say, a transmission fix. Uh, it's a garage purchase. Nobody gets their transmission fixed twice. You get a transmission fix once, maybe every decade, if you're a really bad driver, usually twice in your whole life, right? So, but, but at the end of the day, your experience with that, if as somebody else you meet has a broken transmission, you'll want to send that person back to the same place you went so that you can validate the fact that you went to the right place. So the relationship and the journey really, really matters. Uh, so that, that, that marketing strategy is something you have to really think through before you start banging out and making websites. The second thing about website platform is, is that we always have this mentality that people are going to come in the front door. Less than 50% of people come in the front door because of search engines, because of side links, because of external marketing. The reality is there are a lot of people that come in the front door, but that is not the exclusive journey. People could come in a side door and you got to make sure that you're getting them back to the experience that you want them to have. So there's a lot of effort and thought that needs to go into architecting and what we call wireframing, the process of what your website journey should look like. So that website journey becomes critical because if you just grab a template off the internet, throw together a website, and you haven't thought about what the ex explicitly what the journey looks like, you're just wasting your time. And in fact, Google, when you use Google Analytics, they'll show you what the journeys look like. You could, that what percentage of people go through what classic journey in order to get through to your purchase. So you can even use Google Analytics and say, this is my, this is the, the goal. You literally set goals in your website. They fill out a form, they buy a product, they do, they, they do something. When I figured what that, what that is, I can actually go back using Google Analytics and figure out what pages do they typically go through in order to get through to that. So that allows you to go do A-B testing and other things to go figure out how does my website actually work to get people to take the desired action I'm trying to get them to do. All of this leads to platform. Let me keep going. The thought process that you got to go through to figure out how are people currently using the website? How are people going to use the website? If your website's only three pages or five pages or a blog with two pages, there's not a lot you can do. But once you get into multiple products and categories and concepts and ideas and you start breaking this little knowledge base down, you can really think about what does that experience look like, wrestle with it, test it, and get your website working more. Uh, I, I casually, just by re-architecting a website, we took someone from $10,000 a month to $1.4 million a month in the last two years. I love that story. Now, after you sort of sketch it all out, then you sort of do better and better sketches. And ultimately you say, look, here's how we're going to blueprint, wireframe, 
how the experience should look like in order for people to find out what they're looking for. Once you've blueprinted it and figured out what that is, then you've got to figure out how do I make connect them emotionally. And this is where brand comes in. So brand is that is not just I took a logo and I slapped the logo on my website. It's everything. It's the entire emotional experience. Honestly, we just started working with a client yesterday uh, and they told me all about their business. And I'm like, you have the most amazing business. It's so cool. There is not a single picture of anything relating to your business on your website. It is all stock imagery. You don't even have a logo on your website. You just have your name on your website. You threw a template online. You're a million dollars in revenue and you haven't done any work around branding. Come on. You know, that's not going to, it's not going to work. And the reason for that is that people buy things from people they know, like, and trust. If you stop trusting somebody, you stop buying from some, somebody. You obviously have to know that they exist in order to do that. And you have to like them. You have to li literally like be connected and appreciate your experience with them. And every time there's an interaction, whether it's with you, one of your employees, whether it's your website, they have an experience and they connect the, all those little experiences together and they form an emotional bond. It can be strong or it can be weak, but that emotional bond is what leads you forward. Uh, we, we would sort of ongoing joking about uh, water. Um, and water is actually more expensive per milliliter than gasoline. Uh, which is interesting, uh, and uh, well, not all water, but some water, and you and different people are really, really well con or super connected with different waters that they buy, and that has nothing to do with water, in my opinion. It has to do, even though people claim that they can taste it, yeah, people can, people can't taste it. That, that, that there's scientific evidence that shows people can't taste it, and yet I'm connected to the idea that makes that water unique to me, and so I keep on buying that water. So branding, that idea that I'm emotionally connecting people towards purchasing or working with me, it's all about all the things that we do in graphics and logos in experience, and that goes. So I'm gonna come back and, and answer your question about CMS versus developing from scratch at the end, because after I've taken you through all the CMSs, that will be, a, I'll be able to answer that. Uh, last, uh, last idea around this branding idea is the smashable brand idea. So any piece of your website, any piece of your social media, if I was to take that out, and then there's a poem about a Grecian urn, about a Grecian urn all by itself, uh, just like if you, took, if you smashed a Coke bottle on the ground and gave somebody a small piece of a Coke bottle, they could tell you it's a Coke bottle. We all in this webinar recognized this exact little piece even though the name of it isn't even on the bottle. Why that's important is, we call this the logo test. If I go to the IKEA website and I put the tree frog logo on it, you can instantly tell it's the IKEA website. If I go to the tree frog website, which is all custom branded, custom designed, and I was to replace it with the like IKEA logo, you'd immediately know this is the tree frog website, not. And what happens is people take a template, which could be on literally 50 different people or thousands of different people's website, and I throw a different logo on it, I keep the same, and, and I, I expect to have a different emotional experience, that's not necessarily gonna happen. And that's actually important as we start talking about what happens when we're building with a platform is can we create the emotional experience, not just the journey, but can we create the emotional experience that we need with people through the template options that they have? Make sense? So this is why it's so important. So template options, you know, is this just a template that I buy for 50 bucks or get for free or I, I use one time or am I going to go through the entire process of journey mapping and graphic design and figure out what I'm going to do depending on the size of my company. The next thing that's sort of critical, and this comes at the end, but I'm going to do this first and then talk about platforms is how SEO works. Because platform choice, everything ultimately comes back to after I've, I've created that brilliant experience, if nobody comes to my website, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. So what I want is I want to Google to when people search for stuff, I want them to automatically come back to me. And here's what's even scarier is, is that the stat shows that people believe that the thing that's at the top on Google is actually a better product. Not that they have better SEO, better marketing people, but actually the product itself is better because it ranks better. That is not true, but that's something that we've got to fight. So the question is, how does this whole Google ranking thing work? So SEO is search engine optimization. It's about getting you higher on Google. And listen, I'm going to make every SEO engineer's, uh, you know, 
hate me for saying this, but here, here's, here's the secret. There's a couple of secrets here. The first is Google's a point system. Whoever has the most point system goes to the top. It's not quality of product. That's nothing to do with Google. It's got to do with how many times is the phrase or word on up here on your site. You get a point for the word or phrase appearing on the, uh, in your URL. You get points for it appearing in your title. You get points for how many pages on your website have it. You get points for how many people are externally linked into it. You get points. There are more and more and more things every day and changing of positive influence, positive points you get, and negative influence. Things that you lose points on because you've done it incorrectly. So this is the thing with platforms. If you're limited in how you can gain points or what you can do, you can actually cripple your business growth. Uh, and, and, and listen, this is, it's, it's holistic. So getting social media and digital marketing working on your behalf also drives SEO. So you've kind of got to work everything together strategically in order to meaningfully drive your business. Why? And here's the answer is that the job is not of, of the website builder or the job of Google is not necessarily to get the best product there, but to get the most relevant answer to the question that people ask. So I type something into Google, I'm, answering, I'm asking a question, a form of question, and Google's trying to give me the answer. And the reason why people use Google and don't use AltaVista or somebody else is because Google gives you the right answer. Google does a really good job. And the only way that Google can figure this out, because they can't independently go validate every single product, is to go up to the internet and scrape all the words off everybody's website, and then based on those words, guess who the best product is. And that comes through all sorts of things, experience, uh, the way, uh, how all the pieces fit together. At the end of the day, if Google's job is to, is to get you the most relevant answer, then your job should be become the most credible, the best answer out there surrounding the terms that you have. It's not about magic. It's not about engineering. It's not about how many times can I glue that word on my front page. It's about genuinely creating the best content around your products genuinely having an amazing experience and making it easy for people to buy from you and then you will sell and then Google will send you more people. If you are the best answer, you will get it. So here's the thing, this is the towel Google, is either have the best website for the searches that you're trying to move or spend a boatload of money on engineers who will constantly be fighting Google because Google's trying to find the best answer, not the best engineers. It's okay, if you understand brand, and you understand SEO, and you understand architecture and journey, now, now, we can go pick a platform. Now we can say, what's the best platform to use for your product or service? So I'm gonna go through two things. I'm gonna talk about business to consumer, so e-commerce specific. I'm gonna go through a bunch of those platforms, and then I'm gonna talk about B2B, which is service platform. So if I'm trying to sell something, taxes, shipping, credit cards, sell e-commerce. I'm gonna casually note, if you wanna go watch our webinar around other things, you can sell not just through platforms alone, but through other ways, like social commerce, retail POSs, marketplaces, blah, blah, blah. That's for another webinar. The e-commerce platforms that I'm not just gonna recommend, but I'm to talk to you about how they fit. Depending on what kind, how big, how your business works, will depend on what platform you choose. And ultimately, I, I'm gonna tell you, it's probably one of these four. If you're selling a single product and you wanna get something up quickly and manage it yourself, you're gonna use Wix. The reason is because it's really easy to get started on. Uh, in fact, my, my son, who's 12 years old, I'll talk about him in a second, uh, built a website in Shopify, couldn't make it work. Built a website in WooCommerce, couldn't make it work. Went back and built it in Wix, made it work. This is really, really easy to use, uh, pretty good. If, if you want to grow a little bit, though, and you want to have multiple categories, you want to get some plugins, you want to have sales and deals and all that other stuff, Wix can't do that. you got to up your game. So suddenly you're at Shopify. If you're at Shopify and you're doing all these cool things, you want to start having custom parts to your system, or you want to have multiple people managing your website products, Shopify starts to fail, Shopify starts to drop off, and suddenly now I'm trying to customize stuff. Now I'm not gonna use Shopify because of the programming language it uses and all that other stuff. Now you're into using WordPress as WooCommerce. And suddenly now that I'm really growing, I'm really killing it, I wanna have multiple languages, multiple currencies, multiple shipping options to different countries. 
suddenly I'm into Magento because Wix and Shopify cannot handle that. Oh no, Shopify Plus can. You know, they're, they're still, op they're still, it depends all the way through this. I'm just giving you a rough idea of how these things fit together. So your, your kind of balance is between, you know, by the end of the day today, you can get a Wix website up and running. Literally by the end of the day today, we could not even download and get Magento onto a server. It is, you know, I'm just gonna pound my head on the, on the desk here for a second. But with Wix, you wanna have multiple countries? Yeah, no, no, that's not gonna work. So your complexity and how many products and how many services and how many categories is gonna change. So let's just talk quickly about these platforms right now, just out of interest. Uh, WooCommerce, which is a WordPress plugin that allows you to do shopping. And there's a whole bunch of plugins that do it, but WooCommerce is the most popular. Uh, it's about 38, it's actually the biggest. And the reason for that is everybody has a WordPress website. So you wanna sell some stuff, just drop that on. Shopify though is growing like crazy. Magento is probably, is, I'm gonna say, although they say it's 20%, maybe 20% of sales. It's definitely not 20% of installations. Uh, Shopify will have way more installations. Uh, but Magento is for bigger systems, bigger products, bigger companies. So you're going to get more, more sales along that, those lines. Now, Shopify is growing like crazy. In fact, if you start thinking about the, the world and how it's changing, I sort of see Shopify as akin to Walmart. Walmart takes people's products and puts them all in a big box and you walk into the box and buy them. Shopify takes all people's products and puts them on a big web server and then people go in and buy them. The reality is just like Airbnb is like a giant hotel or Uber is a giant taxi service, Shopify is a giant retail store that lets people create retail stores themselves. And that is why they are the biggest company now in Canada as of a few months ago. So the fact is if we start breaking down all of these different platforms for selling online, what we're gonna find is you have sort of two groups you have and, and, and listen, there, there's all sorts of different things here, whether it's a plugin or what programming languages it uses and whether you're subscribing to it or whether you do it yourself. And yeah, there's all sorts of different differences to it. But the key differences are these. One is some of these are platforms. You, you can't download it and customize it. You're using their way. And if you don't like their way, you're out of here. So those examples would be, say, Shopify, Big Commerce, and Wix, where they're really easy to use, really easy to get rolling but you can't get your information back. If you decide to leave Shopify, yeah, no, you're screwed. Uh, on the other side of this fence is WordPress, which is WooCommerce and Magento, which is, although they have hosted platforms the same way, you can actually download them, put them on your own server, make them do pretty much, not anything you want, but you can work with their systems to do what you want. And the complexity of those two are very different. It's pretty easy to throw together a website with WooCommerce on it, it's pretty difficult to throw together Magento. But once you get start growing, that's where you want to go. So let's just talk about each one of these platforms one at a time. So you got Wix, like I said, my 12 year old, jump online, click a button, get it set up. Uh, the, the benefit is really cheap, really easy to use, lots of templates and stuff. Not, not as many Shopify, but, but enough. The, the problems are that if you want anything else to work with it, you're gonna have to pay. It's not really good for SEO. It's terrible, in fact. Uh, if you want, if you want, you know, to do complex things, it costs a fortune. And here's funny. So we we were asked to become a Wix partner. I'm not sure if we've done that yet. Um, the the Wix guy calls and says, I'm, I'm sort of in the car, we're talking, and, and I said, look, uh, what what programming language can we use to add extensions and add other things? And he was like, well, what do you mean? Why would anyone want to do that? I was sort of like, well, what about connecting to your backend systems? What about creating alternate shipping methodologies? What about all that stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, no one ever would want to do that. Yeah, they don't even have the perspective of what complexity is. They're totally fixated on, you got a couple of products, we'll sell them for you. So that's Wix, that's sort of quick and easy, real easy to use. Uh, if you want to go play with it, go ahead. Next step, Shopify. Easy to get going, lots of beautiful themes on it, lots of expensive but competent apps to like add features and functionality that you wouldn't have imagined. The catch is, is that you can't really customize it. In fact, if you have two people customizing at the same time, one person is constantly overriding the other person. It's, 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 it's nutty. Uh, and once you get going on it, you realize you're spending a boatload. I mean, you're spending two, three, four hundred dollars a month to get a really tweaked out Shopify website. 
and you're getting transaction fees. So you're getting fees to use Shopify at all. So if you go to a platform like WordPress, suddenly you're not paying those fees. But it's beautiful to work with. It's got amazing little pieces to it. Uh, you, it, it you, know, you need to be more than 12 years old, I guess, to really get how it all fits together. But it is pretty easy to use and you can get up and running really fast. Uh, and they just recently released a shop app. So they've got a whole bunch of other features and functions. And because they are a billion, multi-billion dollar company, they're going to keep on adding features and functions. And anybody that's on that Shopify coattail thing is going to keep rolling forward. Now, if for some reason you hate Shopify, most of the people here, I think, are Canadian. And so Shopify is Canadian. So we're like constitutionally obligated to love Shopify. Uh, but if you are not if let's say you're, you're signing in from New Zealand, specifically New Zealand, which is I think where no big commerce is Australian or New Zealand, I forget. Uh, but then you would use big commerce is very, very similar to Shopify. Uh, and again, same idea of Shopify really easy to use. I would actually say that the big commerce aesthetics are nicer than Shopify's aesthetics. From what I've seen, you can make some really, really beautiful websites using it. They have, they have really done a great job with that. And the back end is kind of similar to Shopify, so easy to use, et cetera. So let's say I, I, I decide I wanna keep growing or I wanna have more headroom for growth and more customization, my vision is different. Then what I do is install WordPress and throw WooCommerce on it. And now because I've got a totally open source platform, although I am paying for WooCommerce still, I can do pretty much any integration, anything that I can imagine. There's lots of support, there's lots of things. Now it still requires extensions and stuff. It's not the ultimate thing, but it's there and it works great. And if you're used to using WordPress, you can just slap this in as a module and start selling pretty fast. So, which is why it's the most popular. People do that a lot. The last platform for selling online is Magento. And this is like, this is the thing. This is the Cohiba's baby. This, this will do anything for you that you can possibly imagine. Not maybe possibly imagine. The catch is, so if you want to just go out a little tiny thing, you've got to add the code to handle all the languages, all the different tax and all the different shipping platforms. So to do a tiny little change, like a spelling mistake fix, can take hours because you've got to figure everything out around that. So this becomes, I'm gonna say prohibitively expensive, much more expensive than slapping together, say WordPress. It's the use of the same programming language as WordPress, PHP. But, you, uh, but you're paying a developer for a lot more time to do the same activity. So as you grow, you grow in complexity and you grow in price and cost and hassle as you keep going. Now, as it happens, so whenever you add a product, You've got to add the website that it's going to be connected to because Magento can manage multiple websites for different languages or even different brands all to the same thing. And then you could, you know, you choose the category, the, the taxes, you know, all these different things. So even managing the basic little tiny pieces turns into a massive hassle, not hassle, but a lot more effort. So the whole thing becomes much more complex as you get into Magento. Also, before I, I sort of drop or stop talking about the platforms for e-commerce, don't forget, you still got to deal with core things like shipping and taxes. These are the two things every single e-commerce store trips on. Sure, I can put my product online. It's actually incredibly easy. Now, how do I get it to people? And how am I going to deal with the fact that I sold one thing to Utah? And if I sell something in Utah, I'm obligated to file taxes in Utah. So now you're into a whole other thing, which is not part of this webinar. I'm just putting my hand up and saying, don't forget those things. The last thing I just want to quickly touch base, and I'll, I could do a whole webinar on drop shipping if people are interesting, interested in it. My son set up a web, so just for those of you who don't know what drop shipping is, drop shipping is, uh, I, instead of making a product yourself, what you do is you go to a drop shipping website and you pick products that other people have made and you make a website which basically sells their products. And there are drop shipping websites that have, you know, 700 million products on them. So they can be print products, they can be, you know, whatever they are. So an example of this would be this website, which is watchus.shop. Um, I think it's working right now. Somebody want to go check that? My 12 year old son built this, I don't know, a couple months ago. Uh, he's sold, actually I have one of the watches that I bought from him right here in front of me. It's a classic sort of inexpensive, watch uh it actually is a bluetooth 
a connected watch which monitors steps, does all this like crazy stuff. Um, two interesting things about it. One is that the instructions were exclusively in Chinese. Uh, so obviously it wasn't made here, uh, but I got it. I bought it. And obviously my son had never seen the product, never ne just picked the product that he thought he liked and put them online. I haven't actually seen this yet, but he told me yesterday afternoon that he's added t-shirts to his website. Uh, I have I've yet to go look at that. That's pretty funny. Uh, so the idea is now I, I go through, for example, uh, a drop shipping integration for Wix. One of them, one of them is called Modelist. Printful is another one. Uh, and you go through, you pick all the products you want, you drop them on your website and bam, you're selling. So here's my son while he's 3D printing, building websites off the side, real easy to do. If you don't know, you can't do it, you can. Now, I've talked with e-commerce, given you all the platforms for that. If you are getting into that, you now have enough information to go pick the platform for e-commerce. Let's say, however, you don't want to take people's credit cards and ship pe stuff to people. And in fact, what you want to do is you want to market your services. So you want somebody to pick up a phone and call you. You're, let's say, an accountant or a lawyer, or you want somebody to download your app, uh, or you want somebody to uh, come to your event, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're not actually dealing with those complexities. And I'll tell you, those complexities make you have to go to those platforms. If you don't have those complexities, then you can go use one of these. I will note there's a whole other, and we could go down all sorts of different uh, rabbit holes here. For example, if you are a blogger and you want a blog website, WordPress is actually a blog platform, but I kind of prefer Blogger. Uh, it's, it's easier to use, it's kind of cooler, it's not as big of a mess, and it's not a security disaster like WordPress. But since we're talking about business websites, blog, like blogging, I guess technically is a business, uh, but there's not, I'm presuming that the people in this webinar are looking to take their business online using a platform. So here's our platforms that I would, I'm gonna say recommend where you are in that business growth. We have Wix, we talked about it already. Yes, they will sell stuff for you, but actually it's kind of built as a, you know, do it yourself, throw together a website kind of thing. Slightly better than Wix, but with a very specific twist is Squarespace. Slightly better than that, I'm gonna say, more complex is Joomla. WordPress is kind of like everybody's tool. It's not a CMS, content management system. It's actually a blog platform that has become through just usage a cms and then today i'm going to talk a little bit about hubspot because that's got a very specific space in my mind as well and then if you really want to get big grow out of control you're into drupal uh, and there's two things that i will also talk about today additional to these platforms one is treefrog's platform called leap and two is custom build yourself uh, I'm going to answer those at the very end because I think that'll be that uh, it'll make sense. So again, that sort of popularity index. That's sort of like so. I've got one end, which is it's really easy to use. The other end is I can do whatever I want on the really easy to use, get it up and running real easy. I'm super limited by what I can do. On the other side, I have the freedom to do whatever I want. I'm saying your question is: Is HubSpot a CMS? I'm going to answer that. Give me a second. Stay, stay tuned. Uh, and the popularity of, uh, is also relevant here. So the reason why I chose these platforms, as opposed to looking at all the platforms that exist, because seriously, anybody who learned to program in the late 90s built a CMS. Trust me, I mean, I did, uh, like many, uh, and lots of other people did too. We actually, uh, TreeFrog bought two companies in the last two years, and both of them had built the CMS. So we inherited all of their clients and their CMSs as well as ours. So that's just not even to sort of custom build from scratch. That's actually going and using, uh, building your own custom CMS and adding it to the list. But just like TreeFrog, and I'm going to talk about this for a second, if you are using a CMS that is not, does not have a high popularity index, you're going to fail the get hit by a baseball rule. And the get bit by baseball rule is this. If I can throw a baseball out of my window and hit a developer who uses this platform, that means I can go get support easily in the future. 
So if I'm worried that the platform you're gonna lose support or there's gonna be security concerns in the, in the future that aren't gonna be handled, then you should be using a popular platform. You should not be using a not popular platform because it might die on you and then you're screwed. Hope that answers anybody's questions around that. So here's the, here's the platforms that I picked as the biggest ones uh, and why I picked them instantly. I just did this last night, which is built with, which is a website which is terrible, by the way. I, it, it, it actually is not incorrect information, but it is. It was enough information to give you a sense of this. According to Built With, of the websites they've looked at, which I think the best way to put it, 97.46% are WordPress websites. That would include WooCommerce websites. So that obviously is a pretty large number. My guess is that they are, can only look and see certain platforms and won't look at the other platforms because there's a lot more. I would say WordPress is probably 25, 30% of the internet, not 97.46 of visible internet, not including all the other stuff. Wix has 6.82%, which I'd be very surprised if that were the case. Uh, they must have gone and created a whole crap load of, anyway, I mean, I, I don't want to get sued, uh, but the reality is I, they're, they're kind of new. I, I, they, they haven't built that many. Squarespace, Joomla, GoDaddy. There's some other stuff in Built With's list like Weebly, yeah, uh, Plesk and cPanel are actually platforms that specialize in WordPress and that therefore doesn't make any, make any sense to me. I, but what's interesting here is then if everybody's building with WordPress, in fact, I was sitting at a board meeting at uh, Georgian College uh, on the advisory board there and um one person said you only need wordpress no other platform needs to be built you never need another platform why would anyone use anything other than plot than wordpress first i was like are you nuts like that, that's yes that is a popular platform and yes you can do things but it is a terrible platform for a lot of things and in the last day there were two vulnerability attacks that would that brought down tens of thousands of websites. Because it's so popular, doesn't make it a good thing. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's good. It's gonna leave it alone. So let's go through and let's talk about each one of these platforms, platform by platform. We have Wix, we're gonna talk about those, real easy to use, lots of stuff there, but weak for SEO, weak for some other stuff. I also, the layout tools on Wix, although they're really easy to use for sort of a new designer, the actual designers who really wanna drive brand, you can't do it with Wix. Super limited, super limited. The next the option here is Squarespace. And I gotta say, having built a Squarespace website, um, I, I find it, it's a lot more difficult to use than, Squares, than Wix. It's a lot easier to use than WordPress. I would say it's kind of in the Shopify usage space where it's pretty easy to use. And once you get used to it, you, you're used to it. You know, you gotta get trained on it, but it's good. But one thing I would say is that Squarespace's templates that they offer are beautiful. The design of them, uh, and as a result, it's really creative industry orientated. So photographers, website designers, print designers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the catch is, is, is that in order to have that aesthetic beauty, you need to have great pictures of your, of your business, great pictures, otherwise you're using stock photography. And if you're stuck using stock photography, you don't, then you're gonna, not look great anyway, or be using photos that other people have used and that's where you're not specifying your brand. So again, using it at the right time, the right place is relevant, but I'd only use it if you're in the creative industry and you have absolutely gorgeous hero shots of your products or ser sorry, services. So that, that's Squarespace. So in a, basically, as I showed you in that earlier graph, right as you're using Squarespace, you know, you'd, you'd if you want something more complex than Wix, you'd get into Squarespace. But if you want something even more complex, you'd use WordPress. So kind of, most people, I'd make the jump from Wix right to WordPress. Uh, you, uh, the one thing I didn't include in here was Joomla. And the reason for that is for two reasons. One is Joomla is difficult to work with. It also has the same security issues that WordPress has. It does have some, I'm going to say, better uh, administrative privileges based stuff, but for programmers, it's more difficult to use than WordPress. So I can't see a reason to use Joomla when given all of the um, stuff that's out there for WordPress. It's the same open source, the same programming language, it's the same problems they have had, like six splits in their history. I, 
like it just doesn't bring any additional value beyond what I see in WordPress is my call. WordPress ha is, you know, the, the Beatles were once quoted as saying that they were more popular than Jesus. I would say WordPress is more popular than the Beatles. Um, that'll probably get me shot in some countries, but uh, the, the reality is it's a super popular platform. It's open source. You can pretty much, you can do a lot with it. There's boatloads of people who know WordPress intimately. I mean, throw a baseball, hit a, hit a WordPress developer. Do they know it really, really, really well? Eh. But there are lots of people who would claim to know it really well. Uh, the problem is, is there are zero day attacks. There's this huge security risks. It's not designed as a management system for, so you end up building stuff kind of from scratch anyway. So you're kind of using WordPress, but it's not really WordPress. So I, I would use the example of the tree fraud website as it currently sits is actually using WordPress in quotations. But you'll see we've built custom events, custom media, custom uh, uh, integration of success stories, custom team stuff, custom website portfolios, done all of this custom stuff. About half of it is custom anyway. So why use WordPress? And then, as you'll see on this page, we get constant, constant, not constant, like one a day, people hacking the website, dropping in comments that there is no comment functionality. They just are sending spam to WordPress like directly in the back door uh, that we, do, we don't have any open doors for this. So there are so many people and problems and stuff with WordPress. It's not just sort of a guaranteed work. But if you want to keep going, we're just going to keep moving. We've got 10 minutes left, still lots to share. Uh, the, if you want to keep growing, so we, for example, we built a website for a billion dollar company last year. Uh, and or maybe it was a year before that. Uh, every, every year or so we build a website for a billion dollar company and WordPress just isn't going to cut it because of the security issues, because of the limitations, because of administrative privileges. When you want to start not managing the complexity that Magento would give you, which is just to sell products, but you want to manage content, Drupal would be your ultimate content management system. And what I mean by that is, so this would allow you to take an entire page and have blocks of content, imagery, et cetera, and I can log into the website, only have access to this little tiny section of the website, only be able to use this kind of content and these six images, only be able to do these things with those six images and build pages based on that. This allows a large organization to deeply control their brand, deeply control what goes in and out, who gets what, who gets access to what uh, other things. It also has the, I'm gonna say, best truly integrated multilingual capacity. So Magento does it too for, for e-commerce, but WordPress is not designed for multilingual websites. You, you can do it, you can hack it, you can kind of get it in there with your elbow, but it is not like Drupal, which is specifically designed for incredibly complex groups of content. The problem is, there is no template you click a button and Drupal installs. I mean, this is a massive undertaking, a massive. There's also the issue that Drupal people who make Drupal got into a huge fight, split the whole thing, went off into a whole different direction. And so who knows where it's gonna go, and what's gonna happen next. So it's very complex in terms of where it's gonna go eventually. Uh, so it just like, whereas WordPress is kind of like, this is WordPress, like it or lump it, we're going this direction forever. So again, very specific use. So if you're building for a not-for-profit or you're building for a large organization and critical control, access control is important for you and you want to manage the message and make sure nobody says anything like a hospital or something, a hospital should not have a WordPress website. That is just a disaster waiting to happen. It should be Drupal. Uh, and no developer is going to go, yay, Drupal. But everyone's going to go, yeah, well, that's, that's probably your best option. The last thing I want to talk about here around these sort of classic platforms is HubSpot itself, HubSpot. So HubSpot, we are HubSpot partners. HubSpot is, as asked earlier, this is not a CMS, but it includes the CMS. HubSpot is four things. HubSpot is a CMS, a CRM, a support system, and marketing automation. So marketing automation, just if you don't know what that is, is what you do is you set up so you say if somebody goes and fills out this form we're going to automatically send them this then automatically send them this then automatically send them this then automatically send them this and if they then go to this website then we're going to do this then we're going to do this and you set up 
so that you don't have to do it. So the system does it itself. Uh, so we actually use HubSpot as our marketing automation platform. Then it has a CRM piece to it. So CRM is client relationship management. So all your clients are listed there. <coughs> the, 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 a similar example to this would be Salesforce. So we use Salesforce. So we use HubSpot with Salesforce as our CRM, but you would typically use HubSpot marketing automation, HubSpot CRM. Then additionally, you, want addition, you can also get the support thing attached to your CRM. So if you have a problem with your product or service, you can log in and use HubSpot as your CRM, as your support management. So now you got all the automated triggers that do all the stuff. You got your management, so you know your salespeople can call those people. And then you have your support system. This, this would be akin to Zendesk, which is the most popular support platform. And then lastly, which is new to them, is a web platform akin or similar to WordPress. So this basic, the four, the catch is that they're incredibly expensive and we're talking, so sure, you can get $50 a month to get in with everything. And I think it's, you get like 500, I guess, sorry, I should know this off the top of my head. Uh, but realistically, once you get a few thousand people coming to your website and we want to manage them, you're paying $300 a month just for the CMS. You're paying $1,200 a month to manage all the pieces. <clears throat> that is far more expensive than anything else but it's integrated, it's all there. I would tell you this, HubSpot would say that HubSpot's CMS is as good as WordPress, and I would say horse manure. That is not true, it is a massive pain to use. Uh, it, is, it is possible to do things, but it's very limited. They have some nice templates and nice stuff. The, the, the biggest catch though is once you're in HubSpot, you are stuck. It is a tar baby. You punch it with one hand, punch it with the other hand, hit it with your head, and you are in there. You are never getting loose. So unless you are Briar Rabbit, you do not want to get into this unless you have a specific need. And again, you're kind of like in this website all day managing the stuff, but you want to very, very specifically to understand that you're taking a very specific strategic reason to go into HubSpot. The last CMS that I'm going to talk about in the last minute is actually Tree Frogs that I built in the 90s and has been upgraded and upgraded by much more smarter people than myself. And I'll be honest, we don't use it for all of our website. We are completely platform agnostic. We do use it in certain situations. Those situations would be the following. One is if we, if we work with the client for 10 years, you trust us, we know your business, whether you use WordPress, whether you use HubSpot, whether you use anything else, the fact is, you're probably going to continue to work with us for the next decade, so it doesn't really matter what you're using. So you, there, your worry, your initial worry about popularity and getting, you know, somebody getting hit by a bus and losing competence, that's not important. The second benefit is, is that it's super secure. It's never actually been hacked, knock on wood. And as a result, unlike WordPress, where it could go down, so for things like a hospital or a not-for-profit, this is a really great option. And it's easier to use than anything. It is way easier to use than any of the other things that exist out there. Uh, and in fact, the way it works is this. So I have a website, I go to the website, we actually have a USB button, you press the button, and bam, you're into the administration end and you can add things. Now, we don't have as many plugins and as many things as WordPress does by a long shot. And so there's a, there, there are some, I'm gonna say limitations to using it, but for a lot of our big builds, our developers prefer it. It's the easiest to work with. It's the most secure. It's got a lot of the extra little buttons. And so it is a platform that we bring up for consideration in certain instances. Uh, and we'll see you at the next webinar.